and so I'm continuing on the five loaves and two fishes part three rightly this would be part 3.2 and we left off by talking about the fact that the positive commandment to gather the fragments that nothing be lost gather up those those people those remnants of Israel that that are scattered that have not accessed grace and access the teaching and access uh, sort of the level of development that they should and the achievement and success that they should bring them together into unity with the whole and when the whole and when that happens they won't be lost everyone will be safe and so it shows again that the, the mission is really to save all those who are supposed to be saved really uh, and of course all of those promises that were given and this is a, a chief promise that happens in in many of that sorry that is found in many of the uh the prophetic literature literature of the prophets that at some time in the future somebody will come and gather everything together and in fact we are still waiting uh, on the fulfillment of this and i think what people don't realize is that it was left to the apostles to do it and jesus didn't say i will come and guard them he said i will give you the bread and when you give them the bread then you would gather them uh, and bring them unto myself now as we continue uh with verse 13 parts of verse 13 we have dealt with like the gather and the fragments etc uh, but there are three things which uh, I want to point out about this verse that may not be obvious. The first is that the verse says, Therefore they gathered them together and filled twelve baskets to the fragments of the five barley loaves which remained over and above unto them that had eaten. The word therefore there should have been translated so, uh, meaning that it was the end result of what they did. And it's important here because the commandment has a result. And we saw before that when we looked at the word so it meant purpose the purpose of the thing the reason for doing it and so the reason he gave them the reason before they were able to go out and get the results and for me i think it's an important uh life building principle that we have the correct reason for doing what we are doing in order to receive the ability to see it through and to get the right result often what we do actually is that we have the activity we do whatever we want we we, we plan out all what we're doing without a purpose in place the purpose is not clear and at the end we try to assess the result and then when the result is not what we think it is we have problems but what we really should do is try to put the purpose first think about the purpose of the thing understand what the purpose what the end point should be why you're doing it the why you're doing it is important uh, and here of course the, the gospel writers seem to be uh, quite knowledgeable because they had two different words for it so this is therefore so at the end of receiving the commandment they went out and they did something and that action allowed them to achieve something so the previous activity was to go out and gather and now they're using a different word for filled so the baskets that they had here were filled to the brim absolutely full so they couldn't hold anymore uh, and let us think about how our life becomes when we partake of this bread of life when we partake of this fish we partake of his body and his blood and we become absolutely filled to the brim we are filled with him uh, and i want us to think about for a minute the idea of being filled in greek the word is jemizumi which means to fill to the brim and let's think about how oftentimes we are filled to the brim with pain anguish deception sadness uh destitution despair fear all of these emotional conditions which have us in a predisposed uh a, a sort of a predisposed disconnection from god it predisposes us to disconnecting ourselves from god that's there and we allow ourselves always to be filled in in such a way uh and i would rather that we do like what these people did we fill ourselves with the bread of god with the bread of life with the food of life with the correct ideas the correct concepts the correct action plans to receive the results that we want 
uh, and of course that is just going a little bit off the lesson and, and, and talking about building our own life principles from this lesson because every word is important for us and they, what they filled as we know were 12 baskets uh, and I wish to point out here that the word in Greek for basket that is used is called kofinos which means a small woven basket so these weren't huge baskets that were filled these were small carrier baskets what you would probably carry a couple uh, bread loaves remember of course in those days the loaves of bread were flat cakes and not not the sort of bread that we have so not a sandwich loaf more like a more like a bake if if you will right more like the trinidadian bake so the the loaves of bread uh were to fit in a in, in a basket that wasn't huge uh, and of course in this case they use a particular wood that denotes a basket that is woven but not too large right and so this miracle had seven items five loaves and two fishes that were fed among five thousand men not counting women and children that were there and they received 12 baskets full now that is really a miracle because even after they ate and they ate to their full they were satisfied they were swollen with this food that was given to them uh, there was still a lot left over and this really talks about the provision and I want us to believe really very uh, strongly that he is able to provide Solomon says that the grass in the field is there the beast of the field the fowl of the all of them are there and they are there and they are not toiling and we are here and we are toiling uh, and then jesus says that you know even solomon in all his glory of all his gold and might and kingdoms and rulerships and wisdom he could not be arrayed as one of them because every day he had to get up and toil and what he's telling us here is that if we decide we make the conscious decision to follow him even when we don't have even when we're in despair even when we are afraid even when we are still trying to find the person to give us that miracle whether it be healing or whether it be deliverance or whether it be uh, a change of place or a change of job or a change of lifestyle or whatever it is if we decide to make a conscious effort to follow him closely and to wait on him so while he is doing his work with us throughout the day He's teaching us, he's healing us, he's working with us. We wait on him that he will be cognizant. He will remember, he will acknowledge that we are flesh and he will provide our earthly needs as he is dealing with our heavenly needs, our spiritual needs. And so it's important for us to understand here that we must, we must, we must take our time to focus on him and to hear what he has to say and to develop our spiritual life so that our physical life would be blessed so these people didn't they weren't fed first and then hear the word after you know this was a real thanksgiving he had them there and how we have a thanksgiving and we keep people there for many hours and then feed them at the end and so the idea is that seek ye first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all good things will be added unto you I think this is a really important concept here that if we hear what the purpose is in the thing and we acknowledge where the provision is coming from and then we without thinking about it without murmuring about it without uh, putting any fear or doubt in ourselves follow through with the instruction that is given it will lead to actions that will bring a result and the result will be that we will have more than what we require. We'll reach further than where we thought we'd reach. We would achieve more than what we set out to achieve. We will have more blessing, more grace, more prosperity, more success, more than what we had if we follow these principles that will lead out here. And I think it is a high time that a lot of people start to think in this mindset. He said, if you have the like mindset, as Christ it is well so you have to think like Christ so we are so busy trying to be like Christ in doing things you want to do charity you want to give things you want to show people love you want to take up causes yes and all of that is fine but we're doing all of that without having the mindset the thought mindset that will allow us to, uh, to get to the end point which is 12 full baskets now we have another scripture reference and I'm going to go to in Mark 8 shortly. 
but I want to say that the 12 baskets are symbolic as some of you may already know of the 12 tribes of Israel some people say they were symbolic of the 12 apostles uh, because each one of them had a basket in their hand so each of them had a basket since he gave it to them all 12 of them to share this bread and fish amongst the people as much as they would and yes that is true but the collecting of the 12 baskets represents that in the times to come those who were appointed by Christ himself not the high priest not the Sanhedrin not the scribes not the Pharisees not the Jews not the kings of Israel or whatever those who were appointed by Christ himself will be the ones to gather these people up and they were able to fill 12 baskets which means that they were able to fill fulfill the promise that was given to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They would help the people to see the truth. And in seeing this truth and this light, it will allow them to become the sort of the true spiritual Israelite as they were supposed to be. Now, these 12 tribes, I think we have to have another lesson to talk about these 12 tribes because there's a lot of, uh, I suppose, misconception about what the 12 tribes represent, etc. Uh, but I think it suffice to say here that it's a it's a concept that we're dealing with, and the concept is that there there's sort of a division amongst Israel by tribe, <laughs> tribe, race, creed, money, uh, status, all of these things, purpose divides people. But in the end, each of them would be able to be filled. Each of them. Would be satisfied each of them would receive there's no need for one to look at the other and in the scripture in i believe it is in jeremiah that i just brought up further down that lesson it says that you know ephraim will not envy and jealous judah and that was part of the promise as well uh, and so it means that when all of the baskets are filled none can say i don't have enough everyone will be satisfied uh, and so it points of course to a different type of mindset a mindset which was not existing in israel at the time because the nation was very fragmented and divided and what he's doing here is promising that when they come together they would each have what is required for them and i think it's for us to understand that when we two come together when we support each other in the way that we should that we will all have more when we try to divide ourselves up, then we get less. Uh, and I think for us, it's it's a principle that we need to take and we need to think about deeply and we don't need to uh, ratify it and put that idea into our heart and into our life that when we give to others, when we support each other in love, when we do the right things with each other, then the whole becomes better because he desires us to be whole. He doesn't want the fragments to be scattered. He wants the fragments to come into unison of the Holy Spirit and into the bond of peace. And this is a very important concept here. Now, I would go into the difference between what happened on the Sea of Galilee side that was to Israel and the Sea of Galilee side that was to the Gentiles. Something completely different happened and the text actually is very different uh, the comparative text in Mark. Uh, and just to say at the start, uh, the script is Mark 8, 8. It says, so they did eat and they were filled and they took up with the broken meat that was left over seven baskets. And Mark is a little different because the types of words that Mark uses is very different from John. Uh, and this is why I bought the Mark versus John lesson because Mark uses a different type of word would describe what happened to give us a, a source of, a different flavor a different understanding very clearly uh, a different a clear understanding uh, that the two events although they seem to be the same in essence they were different and actually it was in this in, in the gospel of mark where jesus then asked them further down in this lesson mark chapter 8 he said you know didn't you understand what happened and what I did? Didn't you pay attention? And so because of that, I think it's important that we should pay attention to the differences in it to understand what was really going on.